For the first time in history, US oil prices have gone negative. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to the fastest ever global fall in demand for crude oil, and sellers are paying buyers to take the oil off their hands because they've run out of space to store it. But this isn't the first time we've had an oil crisis. Let's take a look at the history of one of the world's most important raw materials. Here's our chart. On the y-axis, we have the price of a barrel of crude oil, in dollars adjusted for inflation to 2018 values. On the x-axis, we have world oil consumption in barrels per day. This figure rates in the tens of millions. A barrel, in case you're wondering, is about 42 US gallons, about 159 liters. Both of these datasets come from BP's Statistical Review of World Energy 2019. This isn't a conventional line chart, it's a connected scatter plot. Each year is represented by a circle and we draw a line between adjacent years. When the lines go right, consumption's rising, and when they go left, consumption's falling. When they go up, prices are rising, and when they go down, you guessed it, prices are falling. Let's pause here for a moment in 1973. For the first 10 years of our dataset, prices were remarkably stable and demand increased by a similar amount each year. But then something weird happened. The organization of Arab petroleum exporting countries began refusing to sell oil to countries they perceived as supporting Israel during the 1973 Arab-Israeli war. This included the US, the UK, Canada and Japan. This caused oil prices to suddenly rise from $18 a barrel to almost $60 a barrel. The embargo lasted from October 1973 to March 1974, causing a small drop in demand, but prices stabilised at the new level and soon demand rose again at the same rate as before. Then in 1979 something even weirder happened. In the wake of the Iranian revolution, oil production fell about 4% due to protests and strikes in the country. This was a pretty small drop, but the trading markets, who were still haunted by the effects of 1973, as well as the recent near disaster at the Three Mile Island nuclear plant in the States, collectively freaked out. The price of oil more than doubled, panic buying set in, there were queues at gas stations. Output fell more sharply in 1980 again, due to the Iran-Iraq war, keeping prices high and causing economic recessions. US President Jimmy Carter gave a speech encouraging people to reduce their use of energy, and countries took steps to reduce their dependence on Middle Eastern oil, switching to coal, gas and nuclear power instead. This caused demand to fall. But there was another effect too. Huge new oil fields were explored in Siberia, Alaska, Gulf of Mexico, the North Sea, Nigeria and Venezuela. And once the panic died down, this new glut of oil production allowed prices to fall. And they kept falling until about 1986 when they stabilised again, around $30 a barrel. The new resilience in the system let prices remain stable throughout the rest of the 80s and the 90s. Even during the first Gulf War in 1990 and the Asian financial crisis in 1998, neither of which had very much impact. Demand rose steadily as the world resumed its passionate relationship with oil. But there was something new happening behind the scenes. China and India were industrialising fast, and their growing wealth and appetite for oil, combined with new tensions in the Middle East and a few other factors, caused prices to start rising again. That rise steepened and steepened and steepened until 2008 when it hit a record peak of $113 a barrel. 
But then almost overnight, the financial world collapsed, caused by banks being too willing to lend money to people who couldn't pay it back. The price of oil plunged once again, down to $72 a barrel in a single year. The recession caused demand to fall a little too. But this time these effects were short-lived. Within a couple of years, oil prices were at a new peak of $122, the highest that they've ever been, driven by more unrest in the Middle East, the Arab Spring, and international sanctions against Iran. But again, something unexpected was lurking in the wings. For several years, the United States had been working to reduce its oil imports, and one of the technologies it was pursuing involved pumping high-pressure fluids into oil-rich rocks to fracture them and release the oil within. This technique, best known as fracking, unexpectedly doubled US oil output in just a few years. The glut of oil this unleashed onto the world drove prices down again, first slowly and then faster, down to a low of about $45 in 2016. Since then, ongoing trade wars have conspired to push prices back up a little, and demand has continued to rise each year since 2009 fairly reliably. By 2018, when our dataset ends, Daily world oil consumption was just short of 100 million barrels. That's equivalent to about 43 megatons of carbon dioxide released every day, the same as the entire yearly carbon footprint of online shopping giant Amazon. So where are we now in 2020 amid the COVID-19 crisis? Let's grab a different colored pen and take a look. With the total shutdown of the aviation industry and lockdowns around the world stopping people from using their cars, the IEA is expecting a drop in demand of about 30 million barrels a day. That takes us down to 70 million, a level that we haven't seen since the early 90s. That's just a monthly estimate for April 2020 though. By the end of the year, the IEA thinks that we'll see a reduction in global consumption of more like 10 million barrels a day. US oil prices have gone negative, but world oil prices, which is what we're measuring here, haven't yet. They are down to the lowest they've been since early 2002, a price of about $19 a barrel. It's hard to say where they'll be by the end of the year, but the huge amount of oil in storage means they're likely to stay pretty low for some time. So let's mark this point as a guesstimate for 2020. What happens next is a big question. The coronavirus crisis has hidden several bigger changes in the oil market that are coming into alignment. First, there's the rapid rise of renewable energy in recent years. Second, there's the growth of electric cars. And finally, there's the backlash against globalization and increasing concern about climate change. Now, with hundreds of millions of daily commutes suddenly not happening, businesses and workers are probably gonna start asking themselves whether homeworking and video conferencing should be a bigger part of our post-pandemic lives. Maybe 2020 will be the turning point in our lengthy love affair with oil. Maybe demand has peaked and we'll start opting for smarter, cleaner solutions to power our societies. Or perhaps a lengthy period of low prices will drive us straight back to business as usual. In the coming years, we'll find out.